joining us. Uh, thanks for your support during the week and for listening to last week's episode. Um, uh, last week's episode was with Killian um, Groom. We, he is the second strongest man in Ireland. Uh, really great chat with Killian. Uh, a very interesting chat about the mindset of, of someone who is competing in, in what he does. And, uh, you know, he talked about mental health and the things he went through. Um, and the things his dad went through and why he wants to become a psychotherapist. Really interesting to chat with Killian and uh, yeah, I'll be following his 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 career closely from now. Uh, but um, we'll introduce this week's guest. He is an award-winning botanist and a member of the BSBI, let me get this right, Botanical Society of Britain and Ireland. Uh, and his name is Paul Green. How are you doing, Paul? Yeah, very well. Thank you, Derek. Um, we will always uh, begin with a, a short history of your upbringing, please. Yeah, so I, I started life in Guildford in Surrey over in England, <clears throat> and then we moved down to Somerset. So I think of Somerset as home. So I grew up on the Somerset level. So I like I like it to be flat. I don't like hilly, hilly countries. I don't really like the mountains areas. <clears throat> and then I took up um, from Batley, as soon as I could start walking, I like plants. Mm. <clears throat> so it just sort of developed. And I, I loved it all, all wild. I love all wildlife, but plants are the ones I really get into. And then I left school... <clears throat> But back then, that was in the mid 1980s. There wasn't any work around, so I or any sort of wildlife courses. So I um did a carpentry and joinery apprenticeship, but it wasn't something I ever wanted to do. Just that my dad ran his own building business, so it was just it gave me a job when I left school. Mm-hmm. And then in 2004, I I moved down to Cornwall, and I started leading wildlife trips abroad for a company called Green Tours. <clears throat> And then ever since then, I've been making money from plants. But I ne- botany was always meant to be my sort of hobby. I never thought I'd ever be making any money out of it because all, all the work I do is now botany related. But I have no qual- qualifications in botany. I'm completely sort of self-taught. But I spend what well, majority of my life doing looking at plants. So um, <laughs> you don't really have ch- chance to forget what forget what you're learning. So it's quite quite good actually. So, but I mean, it's not a it's it's not a bad way to make a living. Like you know, and and do you like you know because I when I think of someone like you know, say a botanist, obviously, for instance, is do you like being out there on your own and 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 is that is that something you enjoy? Because I know people they need company, but. You know, I always admire the the man or the woman who wants to have a bit of uh, alone time and with their hobby, or their yeah, or, yeah. Their, or, their, or their job. Really. Yeah, yeah, it sort of works both ways. I I love being out on my own because I can wonder where I like, and it's you can go go out into the countryside and get away from everybody. It's peaceful and quiet, and you you see a lot more wildlife. You see see the foxes and on all the birds, but it's nice to go out with like minded people. You have a day. You may be talking plant. I mean, you may be talking plants most of the time, but you're talking about. But but it's it's just nice to have the the contrast of the two. But if I'm honest, I do prefer just get getting up. Oh, where should I go today? And off I go, and um, and think, oh, I've been out all day. I didn't see anybody. I think that's quite quite, quite nice. So, yeah, no, I I agree with that. I can I can buy into that. Um, so uh, Paul, when did you uh, first become aware of mental health? Um, oh, that go back to my childhood. My parents didn't have the most happiest marriage, and my mum was always depressed because my dad was um doing things he shouldn't be doing, yeah. and um so she tried to take her life when I was in my teenagers years, and so I've, I've sort of sort of grown up with it. So it was just childhood was rather depressing. So I, I, that that side of my life, I, I try not to think about too much. So yeah, and like. You know, with with that kind of difficulty, is that is that something that maybe? And you say you you were into plants since you could walk. Is that something that kind of not so much forced you out into it, but made you want to go out a little bit more? Maybe not want to be in the house. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, because because like like I say, it was it was one way. My my dad my dad started when he left school. He started in the forestry trade, but he he didn't really think a boy should be doing um wildlife he thought I should be um, kicking the football around or doing a motorbike mm. but I think it made made me more determined to do what I want but I made that same time once I got out looking at the wildlife I was away from the family and you got it was like it's like you said it was like an escape really mm. so um, and then my grandmother on my mum's side she she didn't get on with my dad so she, she used to encourage me even more so that and, and, and she loved wildlife as well so I mean I preferred being <laughs> being with both my grandparents so um it, it was it was like it was meant to happen in a strange a strange sort of 
twist in a way. Really, yeah. like my other grandparents were mad keen gardeners, so um, I, I had par- I had grandparents who loved plants, so it, it just it just all fit, fitted in nicely. So there's there's the influence, like yeah, and like for for someone who who doesn't know, and this is obviously a, a broad enough question, but what is botany? I mean, it's it's it's, it's, it's quite a broad subject. It really covers mm. anything really to do with plants. I mean. I think of it as just going out and recording plants, but then you d- you do the DNA stuff and you can do surveys. So it really, it's quite a broad subject. But my, my, I like to think of it as just a. I like to go out and it's my in my free time, looking at plants. And it's just a way of relaxing. And and in that kind of setting, you know, of a, a botanist job, we'll say, do you have to do like field studies? Is you know projects? What way does it work? Yeah, so I, I in for, sort of for work, I ta- I do sort of like lots of training courses. I take people out and teach them how to identify, say, the plants growing in the salt marsh, for example. And then I I also have to do a lot of report writing. <laughs> or, or actually, m- m- most of my time is actually spent in front of the computer because it's, for every day you spend out in the field, you at least spend another day um, writing a report, or doing something. And then, and then you might you might go along and survey a river and record all the rare plants, or or somebody wants to build a house or a new road, and you have to just go off and tell them what's what's there and what's not, because people seem to think there's always going to be something rare. And most of the time, it's just the, the common common species. <clears throat> and then I have with a lot of ID, I get a lot of people send me photos, and and then you get specimens arriving in the post to ID. So. <laughs> So, so, so it's such a big, broad, mm. broad subject, really. I mean, because it's, it's really anything. To, my job really covers anything to do with plants. It's, <laughs> sometimes it's a bit more complicated. Because that complicated, you expect to say, "Oh, how how do you separate?" Because lots of the plants there's quite a lot of them, like, like the dandelions. Mm. There's, there's like about 80, 90 species over here, and they all look like. I think people think, "Oh, because you're into plants, you better name it," and that doesn't always work. Or or, or people think, "Oh, because I I like." Irish plants on British plants because there's not too many of them, but they send you pictures from abroad and expect you to sort of um Just name it. and you can't because I mean a lot of the families family of plants that you could say get set like South Africa they don't even occur in this part of the world so but they they don't understand that that's beyond my capability so yeah but, you can't know you can't possibly know every single plant in the world basically no, and, but no. like so i was i was reading about you you uh you completed an award-winning um work uh the atlas flora of somerset with your brother back i think it's back in the 90s wasn't it yeah yeah we, how yeah, long that, did that take for instance that, that was 10 10 years work we pu- published it in 97 so i was only 20 no 30 then so yeah so we, we were one of the youngest people to sort of public account county flora but like, like like i said we just like being out so you just go out go for a walk and make a list of all the plants you saw and did that for 10 years and then we spent a year writing it all up so um, it was i mean a- when people will will think of something you know uh doing a project tends to be something maybe maybe you know if, if someone's doing a project in in college or something like that it's going to take a few months like but to do something for 10 years and have the passion to keep going for those 10 years and then like you said because you made a face there when you talked about report <laughs> doing reports and and i can imagine for someone like you who is likes to be out and about the report side of it is not as attractive no no it really is not because no because I, re- I i really find it quite tiring to sit in front of the computer. I mean, mm. well, what, what should I write for this report? And you, you, get, you get a deadline, so you have to do it. But that's really not me, but it, it just comes with the job. So you just have to um, put up with it. Yeah. That, well, look, um, give us two seconds, uh, Paul. I'm just going to read a quick advert, get it out of the way, and uh, we'll get back into it if that's okay. Um, all right, let's get this right. Fusion Training Centre, Monksland Athlone. A place to train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, kickboxing, martial arts and CrossFit. A great atmosphere with experienced coaches and a real sense of community. If you want to join the team, find us on Facebook at Fusion Training Centre or drop in for a chat. Fusion Training Centre, train like a warrior. Is that all right? Um, so, like, when you say you're out and about, forget about the report side of it for, for now. Uh, you're out and about and doing your your research and stuff like that. How good is that for your, not even so much your mental health, but for your kind of your soul almost like? Oh, oh, it's it's, it's amazing the, how good it can feel. You can have, say, a bad bad day in the the office because you're, you're frustrated writing your report, and then you go out and you you see something 
good. And it just gives you an uplift. It's, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's like someone's giving you some magic power or something. You, you just feel amazing. I mean, it's, it's like you're on cloud nine. You think I've only seen a plot. And most people don't think, oh my God, that is boring. But it, it really does. It really does. That's amazing trick. I mean, I mean, it might not, sometimes it might be like I see a fox or a badger or something, but it's the plants. They just give you a lift and you're like on cloud nine. And that might last for a couple of hours. Sometimes it's usually a couple of minutes, but it, it's, it really is. I think because like if, I, if, I, if I feel like I'm sort of feeling down or just go out and do botany and it, it just it gets rid of all that bad negative sort of thoughts. So and, and like say you're just walking along and you're looking at plants and they may only have a tiny little green flower and you can't you can hardly see unless you get a hand lens, but that's not enough to <laughs> enough to um, make you make you feel good. Or you or you find that find a rare plant that hasn't been seen at the site for a long time. So that and that, that can be really quite exciting. So Yeah, and I think like if I can draw parallels obviously with with gardening and, and people have talked about it on the podcast before. You know, I'd, I'd always ask towards the end of a podcast, like what people like to do in their spare time, and, and they'll say gardening. And my dad is a very keen gardener, and he, he talks about that kind of aspect of not just being outside, but, you know, the mindfulness of, of something like a, a gardening, where it's, it's um you know, you can forget. Now, I would, I would find it doing the dishes, for instance, is very mindful for me, and I love it. But, like, you know... I'm sure you can understand from that point of view, and I and I can see from when you're chatting about botany that it is something that you're so passionate about. You do like there's it's very hard for some people to find that thing that they can be out in or do where they can get be, be mindful and just enjoy and have a passion for it. You know. Yeah, yeah. Because I think I think it's fine. It's, it's just finding that one thing you you really like, and lots of people just don't seem lucky in that sort of way i mean i just i mean i just i think i think because i've just loved wildlife since i could walk i mean when when i was a to toddler when my parents wanted to send us to send me and my brother to bed we'd ask could we go for a walk before we got, went to bed so we could see some more wildlife and i can't imagine any other toddlers ever being like that <laughs> <clears throat> so, so so yeah like like i say uh, yeah, I forgot what the question was now, Derek. No, no, it's just, no, it could, because you're explaining it, it, you're explaining it with that really, that, that you know, you just wanted to go out for a walk. It's a mindful kind of thing. And, it, you know, it's the passion that you have for it. I'd like to imagine that people will, you know, it's like having you on for this reason, that maybe somebody will, this will click with somebody and they'll go, well, that sounds like something I'd like to do. Like, you know, Paul seems to get, you know, great satisfaction from it. So why don't I try it? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's it because because it's it's more than just um, being outside. I mean, I, I I don't like being out when it's raining, for example. <clears throat> but you you go to nice places, you see beautiful views. You might see a rainbow, or the mountains look amazing in the distance. So all that adds adds to it. So there's this kind of like I say you get Ireland has some amazing scenery. So I can be out and think, oh god, that those cliffs or down at the Hook Lighthouse, and oh this is amazing. The waves are splashing up against the rocks, and the lighthouse stands out, and it's just just um. So, so you get that side from so so I'm I'm enjoying the surroundings just mm. as, as much as the plants. Yeah, and I think that that's that's the whole thing of we've had people on who just uh, you know they're explorers, they're ones that they go and and you know climb mountains and do all sorts of stuff but you know there's that extra thing that's there that maybe you know maybe they haven't noticed you know and and every like i said to you before we start recording like everybody talks about you know the animals uh, in nature but we like i think you said like i'd look at a field and it's a it's a field of grass but you would see it as a field of grass with maybe 30 other species of plant underneath <laughs> yeah yeah i think that, that, that's it i mean when i when i'm out i like I like to see how many how many species I can find. So you you go into a green field and it looks from a distance just looks like a green green carpet. Then you start looking and you, you might find like say 20, 30. And if you've got a really good site, you might get a hundred species. And you might have only walked like a hundred meters or two hundred meters, and you can see a lot, a lot of wildlife. Then you get all the um butterflies and the bees and the birds. So you get a lot more in in a very small area. And I think people are really surprised when I go, oh boy. Oh, I've just walked around your field and I've recorded 110 species and they, they seem stunned that you're thinking like in a couple of acres you can get such a good good list I mean it just there's a lot more wildlife out there than we sort of realise mm -hmm. you see a green hedge and it's not just one tree there might be 10 15 different species of tree in that hedgerow so um just 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 adds to the interest so. 
and this leads brilliantly into my uh, my next question, right? Because I I read this and I hope the numbers aren't wrong, but so between ninety seven and two thousand and seven, you collected one hundred sixty eight thousand plant records for uh, County Waterford, which is and I didn't do the maths on this, an average of four hundred and fifty six for each day working in the county. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Because because I, I, I was doing I was still living in the UK when I was doing most of that. So, well, you, um, you can can you can from my point of view, can you can you kind of see how four hundred and fifty six per day is it's it's extraordinary because what like we were just mentioned about a field to us as a field, but when you <laughs> you go and have a little wander around, you see all these species like one hundred sixty eight thousand in in Waterford. It's just a, it's it's a crazy statistic, really. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it sound it sound sounds a lot. I mean, that was. Um, in my done over my holidays over 10, 10 years, because <laughs> <laughs> um, most of my holidays are bot- botany related, <laughs> and, but um, that is quite a small figure compared mm. to because we've, we've done the same in Wexford, we, we're just um about to f- publish the Floral County Wexford, <laughs> but we collected um three quarters of a million records for that over 10 years, so yes, I think it's set there were 700,000 some, some odd records, so um. <laughs> But there was two of us doing it, so it was a bit. But that that I mean that's in, compared to water and when Waterford was done, that was one of the best done counties in Ireland at the time. I mean, Wexford just is on a different par altogether. So, um, so is it just what like why like what Waterford and Wexford are, are beside each other, and how can there be such a disparity between them? Um, it just um, we it just our different court recording units in Wexford. We we recorded on a much smaller unit. So we, if you if you've ever looked at audit survey map, well, most younger people probably mm-hmm. don't know because they use the apps on their phone. They're divided into one kilometre squares with little blue lines on the maps. We record within that area, and make a plant list, and in, in Wexford we we would get, I think it's about one hundred seventy eight. On average, for one kilometer square, I mean that's it sounds a lot, but it's not. It's not. It's not very many compared to um, other parts of the world. But in Waterford, we recorded on a two kilometer unit. So, so, so you, so you're covering four four times the such area. So, um, so but Wexford is exceptionally rich for plants compared to all other Irish counties. But and it's only because it's um, in the southeast and it's a little bit drier and there's a yeah. lot of soil. So it's, it's a, a, lot, a lot of plants don't like growing in where it rains too much or their feet are in the water a lot of the time. So, yeah. so, is so, there, sorry, is there a particularly redundant county where, <laughs> where nothing grows? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I did a, I did a talk for Her- the Heritage Week a couple of weeks ago. And so I, I had, and I so I just had a look look into L- Long Longford. It's a Longford. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a because because Wexford we have um one thousand seven hundred species, and then Longford there's less than nine hundred. So, well, like and again, is that just because the rain Midlands? Um, I mean that, that's some of it, but just that because we, we've done so much work in um in we- Wexford, and yeah. we, so I mean, like most people might only do botany like thirty four times a year or. Probably even less. Like we'd be out nearly every day. So, um, and then we we have the ferry port, so that helps bring in all the non-native plants, the things mm. they call the ones they call it, a- aliens. And so, so and, you, and it's really fascinating because you can watch them arrive at the ferry port and then watch them scratchy spread north and west across the county. Yeah. But normally, normally they stop before they cross the border because um, they, they don't really like the climate once you, once you leave Wexford. It's 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 quite fascinating. So it's it's amazing, like that. You know, call them well, call them aliens, as, and and then like they they won't cross the border. And you you kind of thinking, uh, I don't know. It's again that idea of the way someone looking from the outside in sees plants so much differently from the way you see plants and know about plants. And I and I just think, well, they're just there, and the, and they're not. You know, and this is what's fascinating to me, and that's why I wanted to have you on, like to talk about how the idea of they they do, you know, there is more than just the fact that they just happen to grow there because they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it's hard. It's hard, it's always when you when you from a gardening side point of view, mm. you can plant plant something in the garden that normally grows, but when it comes to the wildlife or the wild the countryside, plants only grow where they want to grow. Mm. So if they like to grow in a bog, they're only growing a bog. And if they want to grow in a hedgerow, they're only growing a hedgerow. And they won't deviate from those sort of habitats. But 
so, so it's always fascinating why plants are so fussy where they grow because i mean they, they don't just they don't just grow anywhere i mean it's you, you may look around and think, well, there's lots of trees around but even the trees have different specific habitats or different soil types so, so, and i think that's why a lot of the plants are quite rare because they're, they're so fussy where they grow i mean i mean, I mean they, they just won't like like saying you sow, sow some seeds and put them in your greenhouse and up they come and you plant them out in the garden and they, they grow they grow but in the countryside that wouldn't happen the plants would have mm. to the seeds would only germinate where they want to germinate it's, it's it's like they've got a mind a different mindset when they're in the countryside but and i know that does, that's not true but it's, it's like it's like they they know i'm, I'm I, I don't want to grow an acid soil and my seeds being spread on limestone so i won't grow i mean it's it's just it's, it's just one of those weird wonderful things of nature how the plants mm. just seem to know they they've got to grow in the right spot so and have you had like because every time we see someone who's maybe maybe uh someone who's talking about plants talking about animals and you know that 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 a find of, of something you know like some some find even if it's nothing to do with like some species that have never been heard of before but the idea of even finding a plant that like you say, would never or would very unlikely to grow in one place and you found it in another place. Have you had that kind of eureka moment? Yeah, I've, I've certainly um, yeah, I've certainly found lots of rarities in Ireland and re-found one of the extinct plants. Like I was walking along the coast up at Morris Castle in County Wexford and sea, sea stock had been extinct in Ireland since 1926, I think it was. Oh. And then there it was on growing on the sand, sand dunes, and I've walked along that stretch of coast quite a lot of times. You think, how did I miss it? But I mean, that was quite, quite, quite ex- uh, very exciting to think it'd been extinct for ne- that was yeah two thousand nineteen. I think I really found that. So um, it'd been extinct for nearly a hundred years in in Ireland, and there there it was just growing grow, growing on the sand dunes. So and, and then you can find plants like I was up in the mountains of Waterford, and I found recurred standwort, and that was only known from one site over in. On the Kerry Court border up in the mountains, and you think, how did how did how did these things get there? And he's up on a rock face, and just at the these rocks on the, up in these the water of the mountains, there's one little patch where there's conglomerate rocks. It's, it's different to all the rest of the rocks in the mountain. Mm. And there it was growing on that just that one little bit of patch of rocks, and it's only about fifty square meters. And the, when you go over to the site over in Kerry and Court, it's exactly the same rock. You think those seeds must have blown around in the wind and once in a million they land on the right type of rock and, and it's, it's it's incredible how that sort of happens yeah. so so it's, it's knowing your habitat when you're out looking at plants if i find a i know b is going to be around and if i find b i know c is going around so you can it's like being a detective a lot of the time you can find one plant and you know it's going to lead you to another and if you find the second you know that the third would be there as well so and then you just walk and i think oh i haven't seen so and so for a long time and you look down and there it is so um it's, or, you, or you're just out, out walking and I've, I've i've had it when i've been talking to somebody on the telephone and i go oh it's, um, um god locks buttercups just popped into my head i look down and there it's by my feet and i think what 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 made me think of that but that, yeah. I, I find that quite often happens it's i i'd like to think um plants give off an odor that we can't actually smell but my brain picks it up and says um or oh, Paul, you're walking over a over, over a rare plant. Look down, and it's 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 it's, a, it's, a real, it's really odd. I mean, that that's is quite, yeah, that's quite often how I actually find them. It's not because I'm I don't even think I'm, I wouldn't even expect to sometimes them to be in the area. But you just you suddenly this this name pops into my head, and, and, I, and I look down or look around, and then I know it's there. So you can always find it. So that's a pretty pretty amazing kind of talent to have there Paul isn't it but uh but I, I so if you so if you see that plant you see the plant that didn't exist in Ireland since 1926 but is that it's a, is it because you've seen it in, in England or uh, did you know did you just know the species yeah, yeah I'd see, I had seen it in Wales a couple of okay. times and then, and then in England once yeah yeah I mean most of the time it's because I recognize the plant but then sometimes you find a plant and you you have to just get the books out and um work it out or, or type type the name into the internet and see if you come up with what you're looking for i mean some, sometimes it can take hours and hours to idea but usually i have a pretty good idea so um, you, you know when you walk along think, oh well that, that plant shouldn't be there that, that, that's not that's not, not meant to be growing in, in this part of ireland so yeah so just you just yeah most of the time I, i'd say 98 percent of the time I'd, i would know that when i sort of yeah see them so um, when you did the the wildlife tours, um, abroad, and you, you you were, what was the kind of obviously it's 
wildlife suggests that it's a bit of everything. And so it wasn't just plants, was it the wildlife or uh, the animals and stuff as well? Yeah, yeah, we'd have like two leaders and I'd go as a botanical leader and we'd sort of cover everything. But like, like I mentioned earlier, wildlife abroad is really, really hard. And you find all, 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 all the bird watchers would know all the birds. Mm. But the plant people would expect me to name everything. Yeah. <laughs> And, and and it's really hard because I me mean, like in in Ireland we we only have about eight nine hundred native species in total across the whole of our, the island of Ireland. You go to a country like Turkey, and well, they have thousands. Yeah. So, so 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 where where we might be trying to come across say one of the pea family, they might, we might only have two in that family. Some of these countries there might be five hundred. So it, it's really difficult. So you, I just had to learn to um know what the public or the group group wanted to ID. And most people only like the pretty flowers <laughs> when you show me. So, so I just learned that I, I only looked at the things they wanted to look at. So um, which, like, is like, fair. which is yeah, fair. Yeah, it is fair. Yeah, because obviously you'd never you'd never get, get anywhere. But but no no, I mean it was those, those trips are quite hard hard because because you I'd have spent hours in the evening trying to key out the plants once they once everybody had gone to bed. So um, is there a, is there like because there's a lot of apps in the world, you know, and and I find like you know apps for you know uh, the uh, the app Shazam for music. It's the music's playing. You can put your app up and you find it. And a lot of seen a lot of that for for animals as well. And is there an app for for plants where you can identify the plants through the yeah. app? Yeah, there are there are there are a few around now. No, I've not tried any of the ones over here. But I was over in France um, back in May, and I was out walking with a non botany friend. And she she had an app on the phone and so she could just take the photo and the and the app had more idea what the plant was than I did sometimes. But no, it, it was fantastic. I mean, mm. really, and as long as you've got a good, you've got a, really, a, a phone with a good camera, you got it's got mm. to really, really homing on the right plant. But no, no, I, I was amazed how good they are. I mean, it makes life a lot lot easier nowadays. So um, it's funny. I was going to ask you that in the sense of like, um, when you started out, uh, and now where the apps are available and people can just take a photo and stuff like that. Obviously you're keen on this app, uh, these apps anyway. And the idea that somebody, uh, an am amateur botanist can go out now and just go, go into a field, take photos and find out what these stuff. I think that's a, obviously a brilliant opportunity for people. Yeah. Oh, oh, definitely. I think, I think it's definitely how people get into wildlife a bit more because it was hard work when you had to flip the pages through the book. And and when you look at a picture in a book or, or a diagram, it, you don't get the jizz of the plant mm. like, like you do from when, when you see it for real. And and the camera seemed to better do that, all these apps do that. So um but I just feel it makes people sort of lazy. Because I I had to literally physically um work out what all the species were when I first started. <laughs> well nowadays you just um, take a photo and it does it for you. So so I do sort of worry that the modern day botanists might not know their plants really because the mm. machines machines are actually doing it for them it's, but, I'm, but it just makes it a lot easier i mean i, I don't blame them so um, yeah and it's look it's it's the pros and cons of it as well and it's like it, obviously you enjoyed so much being you know amongst the plants and and, and and figuring obviously i get the part where you have to flick through the books and find the thing and that's obviously a bit more difficult but um, you know, it's 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 definitely good for for younger people who want to take it up, I guess, and you know, do it. But, um, have you seen because because climate change is obviously a, a big issue, and and you know, I don't know how much you could see from from Ireland. Like, has there been a change in the flora over the last few years? I think I think it's starting to have have an impact because I think I think I mean lately we've had a lot of what I call dry dry summers. I mean, it feels like it hasn't rained for a long time. Mm. You know, we did have a terrific thunderstorm a couple of weeks ago but there's a lot of plants dying this year what i wouldn't normally expect to even suffer from drought problems in, in ireland and, and, our, and lots of our plants are starting to move sort of northwards because they can because it's a bit it's, it's a bit drier the winters i haven't been cold really much lately so it's definitely definitely having an impact and like this especially this year i mean you drive around parts of the country and everything looks yellow or brown mm. where they've died all the field I, I was up on those screen hills yesterday and, and every field was brown and parched and there wasn't a green blade of grass anywhere and, and that's i mean especially in the country like Ireland, where it's, it's so called rains a lot it shouldn't really really happen but it, mm. it, and, and those sort of things are obviously going to have 
start having an impact because lots of plants will then would die. Yeah. And what just want, especially a lot of the wetter loving plants in this part of, especially in the southeast of Ireland, I think they will disappear for good because it would just be too too dry for them. Yeah, and like obviously we don't have the extremes that some countries have had so far, but even just seeing the the two, um, you know the two very spell very uh, warm weather spells that we had, and, and England as well, you know, hitting forty degrees in places in England and stuff, you can't you can't help but wonder how much it is doing damage to to like certain areas who are who are facing those like high high temperatures. Yeah, because what because what it seems to do is lots of plants that they they die before they flower because of the heat. So 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 it's, it, you you wouldn't notice that when you walk around. You just wouldn't people wouldn't see that. So I think so. I think a lot of plants it, it would definitely disappear because of, it's, they would just die off because they they never set seed anymore because they, they before they have a chance to get to that stage. We've had too long a drought and they die off. And, and I've seen that in Wexford quite a lot this year and in Waterford a bit and up in Tipperary. So it's um definitely um sort of happening. And it's, and it's quite scary really because you know especially some some of our rare plants are quite limited. You know, or that they are they might disappear just because the climate's changing. And you don't need many yeah. degrees to make a difference. And the the colours that we see, you know, driving around Ireland and the colours in the countryside that we see just so beautiful to, to remove those colours. Uh, and like you talked about, seeing the yellows and the browns of the fields that are just completely, you know, uh, you know, absolutely dr- uh, parched for any bit of uh, rain. And that would be such a shame, too, because everybody taught any visitor who comes to Ireland from from anywhere in the world talks about the colours, the, diff- the, the different, you know, shades of green and all that. It'd be such a shame to lose that. But I don't know. You know, I, I look. I don't want to get too political on it, obviously, but you know, I don't know what's being done, and I don't know what kind of can be done at this stage if it's possible. But I do notice that people have. What seems to have happened is uh, there's been an, there's been a call for people to let their gardens grow a little bit, whether it's a patch somewhere. Uh, I think is it rewilding or what? Whatever it is, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not, yeah, is it? Yeah. So so allowing parts of their garden to grow to allow bees to come and all that, but that's also allowing. But uh, plants to grow there as well. If if it started some sort of a trend, it, it it's a, it is like you know, I don't know if it's like trying to you know plug a dam with a pen or something. But at least it's something. Yeah, yeah, oh, oh definitely, yeah. I, I mean, it's been amazing seeing all these um lawns mm. go, go wild because because people do like to have tight tight tidy sort of gardens and seeing all the lot of the road fair just let mm. let flower i mean i mean i think i mean it's good i mean that helps the seed pool as well as so it helps the plants produce more seeds so i, I think it's a really positive po- positive i mean i think i think we're going in the right direction for things like that but we've got a very long way way to go to get our wildlife back to when it should be but it's it's, it's all it, I, I feel just feel we're, we're we're heading in the right direction but <laughs> it's probably another 20 30 years away before we really 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 grasp the problem really i just because i think i mean if you're a politician or or somebody who doesn't really into one like you just don't really understand mm. what's happening out there to me i walk around and think oh what, 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 why is there none of no white clover around or whatever well, if you're not, if you, if you don't like wildlife, you just wouldn't realise that. So, mm. so you, they, they just, they just wouldn't notice things are disappearing. Like, like when, when all our elm trees died, the Dutch elm disease. Mm. I, mean, I remember seeing all the dead trees when I was young, but I expect most people wouldn't remember things. Like yeah, that. and and maybe most people wouldn't even know the trees were dead. No, <laughs> no, that's probably no. And, and that moment we got ash dieback, was mm. killing all our ash trees off. And, and then lot, lots, and, and this year, and, and I'm sure it's to do with climate change. Lots of our beach trees are, are looking very sad. Mm. It's like it's like it's like autumn has already arrived. It's only September the first. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting that yeah, yeah, because yeah, a lot of the trees. I mean, look, we've got look, quite a few areas of poplars around here, and they and they like like it damp, so, so they're losing all their leaves because it's just too dry for them. So, so so it's quite fascinating to see what what's what's happening out, out in the country. Sorry. Yeah, what's what's uh, coming up around the corner, I suppose. But yeah. you know, you mentioned uh, you don't like being out in the rain, and I, I, I kind of the reason I wanted to ask you this because I'm I'm a big fan of the rain, and I think I don't know maybe it's because I'm quite morose. I don't know when I go for a run, I quite like the rain. You know, I like uh, I find it quite cleansing for the mind or something. I don't want to sound too, you know, yeah. but I, I, do you, you don't you obviously don't like being out in the the wind and the rain and the cold. No. 
No, not, not really. I mean, part, partly some of it is, I mean, because I've had to do all the um, office work, I, 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 can, I can cope with sitting inside, write a report if it's raining. Mm. So I, I feel like I don't need to be outside when the weather's, weather's sort of bad. And I, and I, and I think that coming from sort of, sort of southern England, we, we, we never had it wet too often so no i just i just i just don't enjoy being being out getting wet i just i, I just i don't know why because like i said the atmosphere can be amazing when you mm. one minute it's pouring of rain then the sun's out and then it's blowing a gale and but no but I, I don't mind the cold and i don't mind the wind it's just 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 the rain i don't really appreciate it so. yeah that, that's funny because it's the, for me it's the wind i know i've always hated the wind and maybe it's because i'm on the bike a good bit and i just haven't cycled the wind is just extra work for me um if someone wanted to get into botany, is there is there any like you know works that they could check out? Obviously, they could check out yours as well. But but just to kind of you know an introductory uh, you know book or anything that they could get into. Yeah, but there's, there's lots of picture guide guide mm. guides now. I mean, they're they're the best best ones to use. There's one by Zoe, Zoe Devlin. She's got a good uh, Irish website with about eighty percent of the flowers on it. So, so, so there's, I mean, that's where you want to start. You want to start mm. looking at the picture books. You don't want to buy, use the sort of technical books I use, we'll just have um, text and the, no, no, no drawings, no photos. I mean, because they're, they're a bit beyond most most botanists. You want to stop, start, and and you don't really need, it's awful to say, you don't, almost don't need the picture guides now, because nowadays you can use social media and just put mm. a photo up and somebody will come along and tell you what it is. So there's, there's, it's a lot lot easier to get into botany now, because like when I first started, um. You didn't have the internet, so if you wanted something ID'd, you'd have to pick it and send it to an expert. Well, nowadays mm. you just take a photo, and it's and just amazing. You put something up on the internet. I mean, I'm mean, and sort of a minute later, somebody's told you what it is, and it's, it just seems so so e easy. But but it's a, I think that's especially since lockdown, I think it's really got people into um mm. the, the plants because there's suddenly there's that you can you can actually name your plant because you you look in a pl plant book and you might be looking at forget me not and there's i think it's about 10 10 different why forget me nots and it's quite hard look, even looking at a picture but when you put it up in line somebody will know what to look what character to look at in that plant or better give you a name and i find that quite satisfactory yeah and that's interesting about what you said about the lockdown as well because that did like because i like I'm very unlucky to start this podcast about two months before lockdown and I, you know i was having guests coming over and stuff but when as we went on during lockdown and we obviously got into zoom and stuff gardening was coming up more and more and that, that the idea of uh people who would maybe never you know they had a garden okay fair enough and they had some plants where they just you know bought down the the, the local uh you know woodies or whatever but it started to become more of a thing more of an interest more of a, a, a um developing you know rather than just putting this <laughs> putting the soil into the soil and going with that it was great it's great to kind of see that where people are taking an interest in things that are you know, more natural, like rather than, you know, I don't want to be the person who's like, oh, don't be playing computer games and stuff. But you know what I mean? Just to be out there, uh, hands in the soil, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, th I think it made people realise how disconnected we'd, we'd some mm -hmm. gone. Because, I mean, everybody was so busy at work and things like that, and, and like, like playing computer games and that, like that. And then suddenly you had all these lockdowns, you had loads of free time, <laughs> you weren't working, and people started just going out and enjoying the wildlife. And I mean, it, it's and I've, 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 it's definitely given a boost to wildlife, and mm. lots of people just carried on. So, in, that's one of the that's one of the few what I call um, positive sides of the lockdown. It sort of actually brought nature to the front for a lot of people. So, 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 so I think I think it was one of one of the benefits, and and it's great to see because a lot a lot of the people just carried on looking at the wildlife and, and still get lots of pleasure from it. Yeah, so. absolutely. Could, does the does the bottom side of your brain ever switch off? Um, not not very often. No, I I always I always joke. I need I need to go on a cruise. <laughs> yeah. So there's no plants to look at, or, or go go take a rocket up to the moon or somewhere, so I can have a a, a, a body free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's awful because I'm I, I'm out walking. It, it doesn't matter where you're walking around a big town town or a city. There's always a plant, so you mm. always get distracted. And I think I shouldn't really be looking at these. And I, I'm out with people who don't really appreciate um, wildlife. I have to pretend I'm not looking, but it's, yeah. very, it's really hard. So um... I can't imagine. Now, I've spoken about this on the podcast before, about a cruise, the idea of a cruise. All right. 
I cannot imagine how painful a cruise is. And uh, look, we're looking at it from different angles, all right? But stuck on a on a ship for however many days, I know you get a little bit of time to wander around places. Stuck on a ship with the same people. The ocean is lovely, but like endless ocean isn't lovely. I, I like a little bit of sand and, you know, some sort of, you know, features. I can't think of a worse thing to do in my time. No, no, I, 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 me, I, I agree with you there. But I mean, I, I do know quite a lot of people love going on those mm. cruises. Say so they're relaxing, but I, I know I would get bored because mm. I, I, I'd need to see, 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 see a plant. So, I think if there's, if anybody wants to read something that's really great about cruises, and um, David Foster Wallace wrote a, uh, a short um, piece for uh, one of the newspapers in the states. Uh, and it's called a supposedly fun thing you'll never do again. And that was about a cruise that he was paid to go on and write about. And it's actually a fascinating piece, but he literally hated every minute of it. Um, Paul, what do you like to do in your spare time? <laughs> I think you know. I think you yeah, know. I think you know the uh, answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I, I, mean I, I mean, I love looking at historical buildings and things like that. But while I'm looking at them, I'd be looking at the plants growing <laughs> on the wall. So, um, but no, yeah, I mean, I mean, any, anything really sort of outdoory, really. Mm. I, mean, I just like I just love being outside. So, but I mean, I do like playing computer games and because I find that's quite a good distraction. I mean, yeah. it, does, it does take your take you completely away from um, wildlife and that. So, so it's, and I find it surprisingly relaxing. And I mean, I like playing them just before I go to bed. And it really helps. This, but most people, I'm always hearing people say, "Well, we should play play computer games when you're about to go to bed." I mean, I, I play them when I'm in bed, but I, they just make me nod off. I don't, and I, I'm not sure it's not because I'm bored, but I, I just um, but it's just, I just find them really relaxing. I think it, you're it, exactly. takes me, yeah, it takes me completely away from my normal sort of way yeah. of thinking. Well, I think you're the exact opposite of everybody else because you know it's like the um, look. I I don't play much computer games, but I do know if I'm on like the iPad on YouTube or something, watching videos and stuff. And if I watch them just before I went to bed, I think I'd have a hard time, you know, switching off because there's so much stuff going on. Even reading, and people talk about reading. I read, you know, as much as I can. But, um, you know, people will read before they fall asleep and they're not off to reading. I can't because I'm still in the in the story, you know. So the idea that you play computer games, and which are kind of a bit of an adrenaline rush at times, and then they help you to go to sleep is... I don't know what it says about you, Paul, but maybe it's a good thing. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I don't really know because, like, like I, cause I'm the same when it comes to reading. Like you are, mm. if I'm reading a book, I get too into the story and I can't relax. Yeah, it doesn't help me sleep. But, but for some reason, I'm if if I'm playing computer games, it it, it just does, and, I'm, and it's definitely not because I'm bored. But I just I think because because I'm not very good at them, so I'm I'm, I'm, always, <laughs> I'm I, I don't it takes me a long time to get to the next level, sort of thing. But I think because it. Because I'm not very good at them, it's quite relaxing mm. because I can't I can't actually um aim to beat um beat whoever I'm playing against or whatever I'm doing because I, I I'm just not that good. So I I think that's why it's relaxing because because I find them quite difficult. I don't have to worry or oh, I must get to level four mm. before I go to sleep because I because I know I won't get there. I just had to keep trying. So it, it, it it's, it's it's a strange sort of way of looking at a computer game, but it just I feel that's why it's it's so good for me because I'm. And I just not, I I can't think quick enough when I'm playing the games. So I can't think. Oh, I meant to meant to do that before before the, the other character gets there. Or so so I, so um, it just it, it's just um I just plod along and um and it it just sort of just and and I find I just, I start falling asleep and then I drop the um, iPad oh, yeah. using. So I I know it, it really works well. So well, maybe it's no expectations in the game. You know, yeah. you've no expectations to get the same level, and that that allows you to relax, which is, you know pretty good um paul you've been a, a fantastic guest uh i've had a, a great time and thank you very much for educating me on all things botany yeah no thanks very much derek i really really enjoyed it it's not something i'd normally do so it makes a nice change so no and i am very grateful for you for, for doing it would you mind sticking around with me for a minute i'll close out the episode take a quick photo and we'll be off yeah okay yeah brilliant uh i also want to thank john for all the tech stuff that he does uh i i always thank my mom and dad granddad during calvin Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you would. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, Spotify, Apple, Anchor, Google Podcasts are where you can find it on the, on the podcast platforms. Thank you very much to everyone for watching and listening. And once again, Paul, thank you very much. No, thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll be back next week, everyone. Uh, take care. Bye.